Are you thinking about selling your home and you want to get top dollar? Listen, you have to do certain things. Stay tuned. That's what we're going to be talking about next. Hi, my name is Natasha Bazil with soldbynat.com and I am an associate broker with Virtual Properties Realty. Today, I actually just finished up an open house uh, over here in Loganville, Georgia. And if you hear an echo, it's because the home is totally vacant and there is actually hardwoods on the first floor. Um, but I really wanted to shoot this video in this home. I want you to see the condition the seller left this home in. Listen, the feedback we're getting, I already expected it because I, I saw it. Like I literally had to tell the seller to stop cleaning. It was okay, you could leave because the seller got a job offer and has relocated. You know, within a couple of weeks, it happened pretty quickly. By the time he contacted me, he had already interviewed a few other agents and then I came in and I wanna say not even a full two weeks after that, um, he was gone. Uh, and he did such a good job. Um, in the condition that he left the house in, but he also did a good job in maintaining the home since he bought it in 2014. And at the time that I'm shooting this video, it's 2020. One thing that I wanna share with you when it comes to choosing the agent to sell your home, the seller shared with me that one of the reasons that he chose me was that I'm a local area expert. Especially for him, he was leaving, the house would be vacant and he was leaving the utilities on. So he needed to know that someone was going to be checking on the property. So just keep that in mind when you are selecting an agent, that might not even be something that you think of, um, but the agent not only managing your transaction, they should be managing your house as well. Okay, so I wanna to talk to you about things that you should do as a homeowner, one, um, through the maintenance of your home as the years go by, because we talk a lot about buying a home and you getting into the home, but how should you maintain the home over the years so that when it does come time to sell, you're getting top dollar. Now, when I talk to people that want to sell their home, um, all of them want to get top dollar for their home. Some of them are more in touch with, you know, the true condition of their home and they're more realistic so that we can set the price accordingly. And then you have some that really don't get how the condition of their home and the features of their home affects the price and also affects the time on market. Don't worry, we're going to dive into that more. One of the questions that I often ask when I'm speaking to someone when they contact me to sell their home, I will ask them on a scale of one to 10, how would you rate your home? I'm not sure that I've ever gotten a 10. Most will say seven, eight, whatever number they give me back, I ask them, so what needs to be done in your home? And they'll tell me, I think the carpet needs to be replaced, maybe fresh paint, maybe. So, you know, those are people that are in touch with, okay, they're, work that needs to be done in order to list. Now for the ones that are aware that their home needs work, but they are only looking at market activity. So every other home in the neighborhood has been selling for X amount and has sold quickly. That's true. However, we have to look at the condition of their home. So when we look at the comps and we see, oh, that home was freshly painted that home had stainless steel appliances and yours had black or white appliances. That home had hardwood flooring and yours has carpet. Like, so it's not an apples to apples situation and that's where pricing comes in. Great example, I met with a seller yesterday. He has a town home that he wants to sell as we were walking through, giving him suggestions of things to do. Easy things, like there were some knobs missing. He really wanted to sell it as is. However, there were little things that he could do that would help in the marketing of his home. And why I say marketing is because most buyers want a home as move-in ready as possible. And you should make your home as move-in ready as possible so that when a buyer comes in, they don't start making a checklist of all the things they need to start deducting from their price. I know, change of scenery, 
like I said, I was doing an open house and then somebody actually had a showing schedule. So I had to get out of the house. So now we're here. Which, so like I was saying with the homeowner uh, that I met with, all the appliances were black, the stove was white. The homeowner said that he could get um, a, a, an appliance at a good price. And I said, if you can get it at a good price, go ahead and do that. Make it so all the appliances are cohesive so that when buyers come in, they're like, oh, this is moving ready versus them coming in and saying, I like the house, but you don't want to hear that but because when but comes into play, it's like, I like the house, but we're going to have to replace the stove. We're going to have to put on knobs. We're going to have to, and then they start adding up this list of what they're going to have to do. Knobs could cost $5. In their mind, it's going to cost $100. Like they're going to overestimate how much it's going to cost to make the repairs. Instead of saying we can get a stove for $500 or $800, they're going to say, well, we need a $3,000 stove. So they're just going to overestimate in their buyer mind. And that price that they put together in their mind, they're going to try to take that off of the offer that they make on the property. So make the home as move-in ready as possible. It also helps with it selling quicker because more people are going to be attracted to the house. And if more people are attracted to the house, then you get multiple offers. And ideally, if it's multiple offers, your agent will call for highest and best with your approval, of course. And you may even sell your house for more than what you asked. So I hope that was a good tip. Now, sellers, in their mind when it comes time to the home inspection they think oh my home's in great condition they're not going to find anything that could be further from the truth on home inspections inspectors are looking in places that we normally don't look um, and they are going to find things that we normally wouldn't see them um, you know they're under cabinets they're in our attic they're looking at pipes like they, they are going in with a fine tooth comb. The average inspection is taking two to three hours. Um, and it also depends on the square footage of your property. So just know sellers that even if you kept your home in good condition, like they are going to find things. Now, as far as inspection reports, I have never seen a blank inspection report. And if you have not done so already, please check out this video. And I talked there about the most common things that are found on inspection reports. That way, when you're preparing to sell, you can already go ahead and address these items because they're gonna come up on your inspection report anyway. Now, an inspection report on a, a good home, a new construction home where there is not a lot to be done, you're still looking at about a 20 page report, okay? So they are still gonna find some stuff. A lot of it is going to be informational, um, maintenance, ongoing maintenance, things that you need to know, but they are gonna catch some things. Your common size report is gonna be about 30 to 40 pages. If there's a lot going on in the house, especially if it's an older home, you're probably gonna have a 50 plus page report. I wanna say the biggest inspection report I've seen, maybe like 80 something pages, I'm thinking. Again, different inspectors do their reports differently. Some may be more detailed than others, but the biggest takeaway is just know when the buyers do a home inspection on your home, they are going to find things and that's just part of the game. Now a PSA for first time home buyers. I said in the beginning, when it comes to working with home buyers, first time home buyers, we focus so much on getting them ready, getting them in the house, and then they're in the house and we never talk about home maintenance and like what you should be doing to keep your home up. Especially nowadays where people are so busy with activities and families and things like that. There are some general things that you should be doing. Um, one thing, put different reminders in your calendar to change out your um, AC filters. You know, those are things that keep your AC um, in good condition. Your water heater, most people do not do this, drain out the sediment out of your water heater. Uh, uh, other things that you should be doing. It's an annual, or maybe you might do it two times a year, just a, like a whole kind of house review, going around with caulk, caulking up windows, doors, you know, things like that around the sinks definitely get those bathrooms around the sinks and the tubs. Um, anywhere where there's water, like again, check out that video. Anywhere where there's water, you definitely want to be proactive. Um, water is the enemy to the house as far as getting in the house and it can damage some stuff. So you definitely want to seal up any place where water can get in. Cleaning, 
may be obvious for some, to some it's not, you know. But when you're selling your home, it needs to, it needs to be, it needs to sparkle, okay? It needs to sparkle. And I know for you guys out there with young ones, it's, you know, harder to show and things like that. But um, just get a little routine. Like, you know, I had a family, they would like have a bin uh, and whenever there was a showing, they would like throw all the kids stuff in there and like put it in the laundry room or put it in the car and go with them. So just implement these little things. And if you do everything right, if you're working with a trusted professional and you guys have a game plan, your home is listed well, it shows well, it should not be on the market for long. So you shouldn't be inconvenienced for long. So again, back to cleaning go through clean light switch covers i'm going to include this video which this is an old video but i was actually listing a home and going through cleaning off light covers um, and just you just want to take those little extra steps it doesn't cost you anything especially get those vents um and it gives the perception to buyers that the home is well maintained. When a, when a home sparkles, it gives that perception, not only to buyers, also to appraisers. Like when appraisers are going out, I'm not an appraiser, I'm not a licensed appraiser, but I'm just saying, when you're selling your home, you have to prove your value twice. You have to sell it to the buyers and then you have to sell it to the appraisers. So yeah, having a home that looks good, well maintained, well cleaned, that is gonna be a plus for you. Yard maintenance. Spring. Spring is like our big house hoorah. Um, so we're changing out mulch. We Last year we went ahead and put down rocks because changing out the mulch gets kind of tiring after a while. Um, so whatever you're doing, but if you have mulch, you're freshening up pine straw, you're freshening it up. Plant, you're planting. If you garden, you're planting. You're sprucing up the front. You're changing your doormat. You know, you're you're just you're just doing these things. Even if you're not selling, these are just home ownership things that people who take pride in home ownership do. This is a biggie. This is this is a biggie. Getting your HVAC service. Like if your only call to a HVAC technician is when something is wrong with the AC. That's why something's wrong with AC. Like your AC should be serviced twice a year, okay? And I want to say my AC technician said it should be in fall and spring or, or winter and spring, one, one of those. But it's two times a year where they come out and service. I've even had clients that have a contract with a company and they come out on schedule and it keeps up the life of the HVAC. And I'm gonna pivot a little bit and tell you that when I am listing my homes, I work with the sellers and we put together a um, property highlight list. So basically the things that buyers wouldn't know, like I'm highlighting that for the buyers to know. Seller has an HVAC contract. We'll highlight all of that so that they know the house that they're buying has been taken care of. If you're an agent watching, definitely highlight that stuff about the home that you're selling so that they can see, man, this seller really took care of this home that we're going to be buying. The good old honey-do list. Man, you know, how many of us have honey-do lists? We're going to get to that. We're going to get to that. Uh, a tip I'm going to have for you there is, I know there's apps and things that you can assign tasks. The basic of the basic have a notebook in the kitchen drawer. And when you see things that need to be done, put it on that honey-do list so that when that time comes around for you to do your big house cleaning and sprucing up and checks and all of that, you can go right to the honey-do list and then you're not trying to remember, what was it that thing I saw a couple of months ago that I needed to do? So yeah, go ahead and get a notebook, put it in the drawer or put it on your phone. Do something just to remember to keep up with your house. Now, some of these things are general house upkeep items, um, but they still, they may not necessarily add value, but they maintain your home's value. And if you are not doing these things, your home is actually depreciating in value. Like you're not keeping your home up so that when it comes time to sell, you can get top dollar. So now, your options are either go back and do all of this work that you should have been doing or it's going to affect your price stays on market etc and it's similar to a car when you have a car you got to take it in for oil changes you have regular maintenance there are things that you need to do it is the same with a house 
things that you can do outside of the upkeep things that I mentioned, upgrades that you can do that bring a lot of value, um, your roofs, uh, HVAC, water heater, your updating your kitchens, your baths, um, those are big because the house isn't priced to reflect that, they're going to take off a lot knowing that they have to go ahead and now update these. Also flooring, a lot of people nowadays want hardwoods um, or even if you're gonna keep carpet, if the carpet is in really bad condition, like just updating flooring adds value. Paint, a good coat of paint can work wonders in a home. Um, so fresh paint in a home, I will tell you this, if you're gonna paint, go with the neutrals. Back in the day, well, I say back in the day, it feels like it was just a couple of years ago, that the, the color was beige, the in color was beige that every home came with, now it's gray. On these walls, it's agreeable gray. Um, so you definitely wanna go with a more neutral color. Um, yeah, if you're gonna paint, the whole home, like definitely, please, please make it a neutral color. The last two things I'll say is light fixtures or, or bathroom fixtures, faucet fixtures and all of that. Maybe you don't spruce up the whole bathroom, but you can change the faucets, you can change the knobs and things like that. Blind, maybe it was white blinds here and I decided to put in color blind, co color blinds, colored blinds and that could, you know, gives a richer look and that's relatively low So check cost. out the video that I did for the property that I was in at the beginning and you will see how nice the home shows. Um, by the time you see it, prayerfully it is under contract by then, but you'll see how nice the home shows. I will also put a link to the property website so that you can see that as well. And, and a shameless plug here for my sellers, you definitely will get a property website like the one that you see. So check out that link and pictures and videos. So go ahead and check that out. If you want more information um, on working with me and selling your home, please visit www.sellingwithnat.com. Again, www.sellingwithnat.com. There you can check out my stats. Um, you can read testimonials. You can see examples like the video um, that I mentioned, photos, my marketing material, and get more information about why I'm the best realtor to sell your home. And oh, I did mention that I wanted you to see how the seller, you know, left the house. Like it was so moving ready. Speaking of moving ready, it needs to be, think model home. Model home, when you are selling your home, try to get it as model home ready as possible. It really helps buyers to connect and fall in love and imagine themselves there. That's why builders decorate a model home because they want to pull at your heartstrings and your emotion. Do the same thing when you're selling your home. And I have some home staging videos as well, which I will include. And I will put links down below for that as well. So happy home selling, happy home maintenance. Hey for real time, you're in Georgia. I'd love the opportunity to chat with you. My information is down below. If, and if you're not in Georgia, you can still contact me because I have a database of great agents um, all over. Uh, you know, that's one thing in real estate, we really network and connect with people so I can refer you. And if you have not done so already, please like this video, give it a thumbs up and leave me just leave me something, leave me something in the comment box and let me know that you found some something of value in this video and subscribe to this channel. I bring you new videos every Tuesday, all right? And if I can ever be of assistance, please do not hesitate to reach out to me. Have a positive, peaceful, and productive day. Bye.